All right, so James 1. No, I got to get there. All right, James 1. We're going to be reading uh, verse 21 through 22. It says, Wherefore, lay apart all... Uh, I am reading the wrong verse. Read verse 22. It says, uh, But be ye doers of the word, and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. Now, the title of my sermon is Silent Partners. And I'm not going to teach you how to be a silent partner. I'm not going to teach you how to be a talker. But the reason my title is Silent Partners is because I really want silent partners to hear this. And this is it. I think this verse can attain to a lot of things. But this verse I'm going to use to talk about silent partners because this is exactly what they're doing. They're being a hearer and not a doer. So go to, uh, you're going to go to Proverbs 11.30. I'm going to read for you uh, Romans 1. And a lot of the, I'm going to first kind of give you something to encourage you, and then I'm going to just reprove some things. I'm not against silent partners. I'm not against that at all. I know there's a lot of wisdom that needs to be done before you can actually be a talker. But I just want to encourage you, and then I want to reprove some things to you just to get you going, and hopefully this will encourage you to move a little little bit faster than that. Um, Romans 1, we're going to be reading verse 16. It says, For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, For it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth, to Jew first, and then also to the Greek. The the most common thing that I hear out of silent partners, oh, I'm not ready yet because I haven't read my whole Bible. Or I'm not ready yet because I don't know how to battle an atheist. Or I'm not ready yet because, you know, what if I meet a Jew? What do I say? And the reason I want to read this passage is because it says that the gospel... Of Christ, it is the power of God unto salvation. It doesn't say it's the power of Curtis. Praise God. It doesn't say it's the power of Pastor Manley that saves. It doesn't say it's the power of Jonathan. It says it's the power of God unto salvation. And that excites me because it's not about me. It's not about my mouth. It's about what comes out of my mouth, and it's the word that comes out of my mouth. Amen. The word is what saves. And then, in, you know, if you read, I was going to go to a little bit more to prove this, but. You know, that should excite us, that it's not us that gets people saved. It's God's Word. And whenever we go out and we knock doors, it has really nothing to do with the words that I speak because they're not my words, okay? They're God's words. Now, go to Proverbs 11.30. We should all really know this one. This is a very famous passage. It says, uh, it says the fruit of the righteous is a tree of life, and he that winneth souls is wise. So there's going to be two things that I talk about in this passage. It's the aspect of being wise and what is the fruit of the righteous. So we're going to go to, uh, go to Ephesians 5.15. Go to Ephesians 5.15. Ephesians 5.15. I'm going to read Colossians 4, 3 through 5. It says, with all praying also for us, that God would open unto us a door of utterance to speak the mystery of Christ, for which I am also in bonds, that I may make it manifest as I ought to speak. Walk in wisdom toward them that are without, redeeming the time. We don't have a lot of time, okay? We're all going to die, but I believe that these days are evil, and that's what you're going to see in Ephesians 5. We don't have a lot of time because I believe we're in the end times, okay? And if you want to sit there and be a silent partner, great. But you have to understand that being a silent partner, there's a moving on. Okay? There is a moving on to where you become a talker and you start winning souls yourself because there's not a lot of time. Okay? And it says, walk in wisdom toward them that are without. We saw in Proverbs uh, 11 that we need to be wise. Okay? And one one of the ways you can be wise is not only knowing what scriptures to go to, but to understand that there's not a lot of time, okay? And it says, uh, go to Ephesians 5. We're already there. Ephesians 5, 15, it says, See then that ye walk circumspectly, which I just think means, you know, walk with your head on a swivel, not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time because the days are evil. Wherefore, be not unwise, but understanding what the will of the Lord is. And Hector just covered this. The will of the Lord is that none should perish. 
It says in John 6, 40, it says, And this is the will of him that sent me, that everyone which seeth the Son and believeth on him may have everlasting life. If you understand that, this verse says that you're wise, but you have to redeem the time too. We all understand people are going to hell. But to be wise, you have to also redeem the time and go soul winning. That's what I believe this is saying. See, it says, Wherefore be ye not unwise, but understanding what the will of the Lord is. We all understand that. We all understand people are dying and going to hell, I hope. I mean, you're in this church. I think that that's made clear. But it says, redeem the time because the days are evil. Now go to, uh, now I'm going to talk about the fruit of the Christian. We're not going to go back to 1130, Proverbs 1130. But go to Mark 4. And I'm almost done. This is the last place I'm going. Mark 4. Now, uh, Remy Thompson, he came by and he did a sermon on this, on this whole passage. So I'm not going to go super deep into it. But there's such thing as a, a Christian planted on stones. There's a Christian who's in thorny ground. And then there's the grounded Christian. Okay? And there's, there's a similarity between the stony Christian and the thorny Christian. That's what I call it. And uh, Mark 4, starting in verse 15, it says, And these are they by the wayside where the word is sown, but when they have heard, Satan cometh immediately and taketh away the word that was sown in their hearts. I believe that's the unsaved person. And then it says in 16, And these are they likewise which are sown on stony ground, who when they have heard the word, immediately receive it with gladness, and have no root in themselves, and so endure, but for a time afterward, when the affliction or persecution ariseth for the word's sake, immediately they are offended. And in another passage it says they fall away. But... What I want you to understand is that if, a, if you plant a seed, okay, let's see, you, you do a, an apple tree or an apple seed, and you put that on, the, on a stone, is it ever going to produce fruit? The answer is no. Now, there's the thorny Christian. It says in verse 18, it says, And these are they which are sown among uh, thorns, such as hear the word, and the cares of the world, and the deceitfulness of riches, and the lust of things uh, entering in, Choke the word and it becometh unfruitful. Okay, here's what I'm going to say. If you are not winning souls, if you have no fruit, you are one of these. You are one of these. Period. Now, you might be planted in good ground right now, but I guarantee you, you will never know until you win a soul. You are one of these. And both of these people fall away. Both of them. They're both gone. Now it says in Matthew 13, 5 through 8, this is the same parable. It says, Some fell upon stony places where they had not much earth, and forthwith they sprung up because they had no deepness of earth. And when the sun was up, they were scorched. And because they had no root, they withered away. You're either going to get withered away or you're going to get choked. Amen. That's it. Or you're going to produce fruit. That's what it says in verse uh, 20. It says, and these are they which are sown on good ground, such as hear the word and receive it and bring forth fruit, some 30, some 60, and some 100. You want to know if you're on good ground? You're going to go win souls. You're not going to stay a silent partner forever. You're not going to stay a silent partner for long because you have to understand this. Not only do you have to redeem the time, not only is it important for you to redeem the time, but it's also important for you to produce fruit if you don't want to be a stony Christian or a thorny Christian. Period. That's it. That's all I got. Who's next?